Hello, my name is Brandon, and welcome to Retro Reactions, a place where I experience amazing music from the 70s, 80s, and 90s for the very first time. And today we're going to be traveling all the way back to 1986 to listen to Feeding the Fire by Genesis. This one is the B-side of Land of Confusion. Uh, that's all I could find out about it, but it comes highly recommended by a few of you. Anyway, if you're new here, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and like button as well as the notification bell to join the Retro Reactions community where it's all amazing music all the time. Here we go.
Wow, great song. I can see why some of you think it should have been on the album. Feeding the Fire, Anything She Does, mm, My Opinion Only, of course. Really good song. Uh, really interesting keyboard melodies, you know, to start the song off with. Usually those don't come till later, so that was cool. It was paired with these pounding drums. Uh, great vibe there. Uh, also great bass by Mike. He always shines. He stood out for me in this one. Um, also, Mike was playing these really cool single punchy electric guitar chords duh, duh, throughout the song, at least in the beginning section. I really enjoyed that and noticed that as well. Obviously, this is one of those classic big Phil vocal kind of songs. He does it so often in Genesis and in his own work especially. Then we do get a slow down section, a really interesting keyboard tone in this section. It sounded a lot like Home by the Sea, one of the keyboards used there, a really nice callback. I think it might have even been the same exact sound. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, I like that we get softer, lower fill vocals in this section. At this point, I realize this is going to be a peaks and valley type of song. Nothing new, of course, with Genesis, but it's like we get one higher mood and then we go down to one lower mood, back and forth. Pretty straightforward, but just as cool. I think my favorite part of the song happened around the 60% mark. Uh, we get a nice shiny keyboard solo by Tony. Went on for a while. That was really enjoyable. And then it was kind of joined in with, I think, a guitar. It was pretty subtle. They were kind of mimicking each other. And then Phil came in, you know, with no words, just vocals, kind of doing his thing to mimic. I think it was like a di di da Really cool. I like that section a lot. Very creative. And then we get something really special. Of course, Phil and his O oh, soaring into the sky. We get that in, you know, tonight, tonight, tonight. But in this one, he did the O, oh, but then he made it fall down. Really, really unusual. I enjoyed that. It surprised me. And of course, a powerful ending section, naturally building up, loud, expressive. Uh, that scorn and disdain is conveyed in Phil's vocals, especially in the end there. Then I really enjoyed the ending. We get one big note or one big chord, and then, you know, they hold it, hold it, hold it. They let it simmer, simmer, simmer in our head, and then it's done. Very effective. All right, let's talk about the lyrics. Uh, I think it's a scornful message to someone who is living a life of fear, ignorance, indifference, and laziness. This person is not thinking for themselves, and in the end, that's what will be their downfall. Day by day, they continue to dig their own grave a little bit at a time. All right, really enjoyed this one. It had a lot of what makes Genesis so special. I'm giving it five super shiny golden records, an A-plus for Feeding the Fire by Genesis, 1986. Thank you so much, Phil Collins, Tony Banks, and Mike Rutherford. All right, that's it for now. Thank you so, so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment down below. If you wish to chat about this song, I would love to know what you think about it. So you take care, stay safe, stay hydrated, and remember to let peace, calm, and light into your day and night. And I'll see you next time in the past.